Greetings and welcome to the Halloween edition of the Sliders Review. And I'm here today to talk to you about Children of the Corn to Run Away. So this came out in 2018 and you can find it directly on DVD or you can watch it free on Tubi and other free streaming sites. So after watching Children of the Corn for the first time a few nights ago, I decided to watch a few other ones. I wanted to watch the remake, but I couldn't find it somehow. Well, actually, I think I did find it, but somehow I messed up and got to this one instead. <laughs> and stuff because like I was curious because the description sounded more interesting. So I was like, okay, I'll watch this one before I watch the remake. I have mixed feelings about this one. It's not entirely a terrible movie. But there are just some things that are just like displayed in a very odd kind of ominous way, but not in a cool, creepy, Halloween-y kind of way. Just a more of a poor direction kind of way. Um, it's very low budget. Um, and it's very slowly paced. So slowly paced that like you, you, you're still engaged kind of, but you kind of just get bored after a while. And that's the problem I'm having. It's just slow paced and like it's badly directed and like um, it gets a bit confusing, especially if you're not all too familiar with the whole children in the corn thing like I am. Like remember when I said like the blue devil looking thing is the one who's standing behind the um, rose or whatever. And so like, yeah. And when it comes to this, like I said before, it's not entirely bad. It's just... Things could have been like a little bit more better and a little bit more clearer and stuff like that. And so with this movie, it's weird. Like all the Children of the Corn movie has a Wikipedia page except for this one. You have to go to the IMBD one and stuff. And so when it comes to this, apparently it starts off in the beginning. A woman is narrating and basically she was one of the kids back in the day like back in the day day um in that one nebraska cornfield and stuff you know the one who like killed the parents and adults and stuff like that and so she said that you know she knew she had to escape because you know she started getting older and stuff and she got pregnant so all those kids from back in the day um some of them grew up and you know got more kids or whatever and you know so she decided, you know, she's going to set the cornfield ablaze and everything and make her escape. And she did. So they say a decade has passed. She's now with her son. He doesn't look 10, but I guess whatever. It was a decade that passed. And so she, her and her son have been on the run um, ever since then. And they primarily live out their car. Because, of course, they was a bunch of kids growing up and um reach some point of adult age they don't really know how to take care of themselves that well i guess and so she has no money she can't go and you know like get too many homes and stuff and she has to like um work like under the table to get some money sometimes get like a hotel room and stuff but they mostly just live out her car and stuff and that's the part that kind of gets a little choppy a little confusing first like you know I guess, um, what's his name, uh, from the first two movie, the, um, adults, what is it, it's Bert and Vicky or whatever, like, I guess they didn't call, like, <laughs> no adults to go into town and get the rest of those kids, so they just kind of left in there, but took the other two that they liked, because think about it, after they left and everything, you think those kids would have been like put in the system or something. But like I said before, you know, I haven't seen the other movies. So I don't know what the world has happened. But I'm just going to this on a logical point. Now, I don't know if this takes place after the remake or the original one. If it takes place after the original one, she should be a whole lot older and stuff than what she is. But she doesn't look that old. It's never made clear when this movie takes place in which um, timeline universe and stuff. And so, like, then another problem I'm having is kind of like, you know, if she doesn't have that many skills and money and this and that. Well, I guess she probably took some of the money back from, like, her hometown. But, like, you know, I don't know. You think they would get, like, a home and move far 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 away in everything right and so like 
so the people won't be able to find them. But when she set the thing on blaze, supposedly they all died and everything. So she shouldn't really worry unless some escaped and everything, you know? And so this is the part that's a little mucky. Like, why not move far away so they can't find you? But I guess the one who, like, stands behind the rose or whatever um, can find, like, her or whatever. Or so, but whatever, you know what I'm saying? So when she gets into, like, you know, she goes to, like, a hotel. Her and her son, you know, they stay there. Um, he said he wants a normal life. He wants to go to a normal school. He wants some friends. She can't give him that and everything. She has to, like, homeschool him and stuff and keep on the run. He doesn't have a normal life. I find this part very intriguing. Like, you know, she's in this cult. She's on her own with her son. She's doing the best she can. I find that very intriguing story-wise and stuff. Well, they end up in the new town. Another hick town and everything. And supposedly she was swerving around. So the sheriff, like, you know, um, took her and her son in. Now, I didn't see them swerving around. He will probably just be an idiot. But in a way, he impounded her vehicle. Now they had no place to stay. She sees a mechanic um, place and he's hiring. So she wants to work there. But he tells her, uh, she tells him that this is only like part time until she can leave and everything. But he tells her he needs a full time person. And so then he kicks them out. Now his name is Carl, the black dude. And so like... He, like, his thing about all the acting. I like the acting in the movie. The acting's not a problem. And so he's a little bit of a jerk. Like, you don't know which way you're going to get with him. Sometimes he's nice. Sometimes he's a jerk. He kicks them out and it's pouring raining. And they're just standing outside. And so he, you think he's heartless, but then he has a heart. He lets them in and lets them sleep in um, his um, place of business and stuff. And so, like... He tells her, you know, well, she starts like, you know, filling out forms. She's going to work there because at first he was going to kick her out in the morning once sunlight came. But she told him, plain and simple, um, she'll just do it full time and stay there. Why not? You know what I'm saying? So he hires her and stuff. And he's kind of a cool character, but you kind of don't know what you get. Like, you get so many different personalities, like I said before. So when he sees her working on a car, she has like short shorts on <laughs> and she's bending over and he, I thought he was interested but then he just gives her like you know a jumpsuit the way and stuff like that and so I guess when other people come in they won't be seeing like her butt cheeks and stuff <laughs> well in a way she tries to enroll her son in school right and when she oh by the way Carl has a limp on his leg for some reason why is never explained like never is never even asked no nothing so whatever anyway she tries to enroll her son in the school but because she doesn't have a place of residence they won't take him in then there's a racist comment made which just took me a surprise i'm just kind of like okay yeah it's an old hick town but kind of why bring this up it just came out of nowhere and so the principal ladies all like look I know that colored boy you shacking up with and blah, blah, blah. We don't take whores and stuff like that and blah, blah, blah. You gotta get yourself right. And I'm just like, colored boy. Like, what the world time century is this woman in? <laughs> and stuff. But it was just kind of unnecessary to add that, I think. But, you know, whatever. And so, like... At some point in time, he takes her to a place and tells her she can stay at this house. I think he said something about like old people live here or something like that. Um, it's not very clear. They don't really explain things too well in this movie. I don't know if it's an old couple and they need somebody to take care of them. So they let her stay. But she has these weird premonitions thing. Like she's an odd character, Ruth is. And so Ruth, every time she goes around in town, she keeps seeing dead like people and everything. Then their bodies reanimate. And it rewinds to how they died. And it's odd. Like, I don't know if that's part of the other um, sequels or not. But it was not like that in the first movie. Now, there was the one girl who had the insight. But they really didn't explain that. So, this part just kind of takes me out of the movie. Because I don't know what the world's going on. And why she's always seeing all these dead people and stuff. But she also keeps seeing a little blonde girl in a yellow dress. The girl just stands around everywhere. She walks around and then the little girl ends up killing people in town. And the little girl is very strong and stuff. And so it's kind of, I'm, I'm like, okay, she must be one of those kids from Nebraska and everything. 
But when uh, Ruth sees her, she doesn't know if that girl's from that town or not. But she knows that those people are coming for her son. Because he's like a kid and stuff. And so she should be freaked out when she sees this girl, but she never really kind of is. Also, Ruth is kind of weird. Like one time she woke up and she was holding like a giant wrench in her hand and, her, and it freaked her son out. Now her son, he's a fairly okay kid. Like he's not stubborn too much, um, but he wants a normal life. Now he befriends a waitress at this um, diner and he spends a lot of time with her. It's almost to the point where it feels like there might be something going on with them, but it's not. <laughs> and so him and the waitress, they get along very well because she hates the people who um, live in that town and they're always rude to her and stuff like that. Well, in a way, at some point in time, when Ruth, because everybody eats at this diner, nobody cooks at their place. So Ruth and her son are at the diner, they're talking to Sarah, the waitress. And all of a sudden, Ruth has one of her weird things going on where a bunch of kids recreate the scene from the very first Children of the Corn movie in the beginning where the kids walk into the diner and they start killing all the adults. Now, the way they're doing it, you don't like when I when I watched it in the original one, it was suspense. It was odd. It was freaky. It was eerie. And this one, it just fell blah like it felt stale it felt like flat I, I couldn't feel nothing from it you know and so it's nothing but another dream of hers then she has another dream where the little girl in the little dress once again is out with her son and they're hanging out at one point and then there's another time when um there's a bunch of kids out in the field and they're eating and ripping the flesh from like a goat or something and they're just eating the intestines and blood and so she thinks her son was hanging out with him he's like what the world are you talking about so at some point in time um her and carl decide they're gonna hook up for some reason not sure why it just came out of complete nowhere they just like started hooking up and so as they're about to do it, her son walks down the steps and sees them. And Carl's just all like, boy, go back upstairs. <laughs> he wants to finish. <laughs> and so she's like, no, and everything like, get off me and stuff. And she's all like, this was a mistake and blah, blah. So those two have a riff because of this. And they're no longer on speaking terms. And she tells him it was a mistake, which hurts his feelings and stuff. And so then one day he tells her, you know, you messed somebody's car up. Like you put oil and you changed it, but you left the cap off and it messed the car up. So he's all like, I got to let you go. So then it's like, well, hold up. Even I got this impression. I'm like, dude, are you only saying this because she didn't give you none and stuff? And she even says that too. So she's pissed and she leaves. So anyways, like, you know. She starts doing some more weird, freaky, like paranormal type stuff where she's seeing people dead and seeing them reanimate and rewinding going backwards and stuff. And she's so upset that she goes back to that school that rejected um, her son and she's just swinging around the swing set. And it's like, it's weird and stuff. And even the teachers are kind of like, what the heck are you doing here and stuff? And so, then all of a sudden, the little girl in the dress, she kills the crap out of Carl. And that's the best kill in the entire movie. <laughs> like, you really felt for this dude. Because she takes a wrench and she smashes his good leg. So he's limping all on the ground. Now, Carl has a gun, but he can't get to it because it's over in his desk. So he's crawling to the car as the girl's like smacking him hard with the wrench and stuff. And then he makes his way into the car and she's just looking around the car and she starts smashing all the windows. He is selling this like a wrestler. He is giving a good performance, um, being scared of this little girl as she's crashing into the car with that wrench and stuff. He's able to get out and he's crawling back around. He tries to get his gun, but is unable to. And she beats the snot rockets out of him with that wrench. This little girl is strong. Then she takes a rod and she shoves it through his heart. And then she starts hitting at the rod, like making it go in more and stuff. And there's like blood everywhere. So anyway, at some point, um, Ruth is having another weird freaky moment and stuff and she has to get her son out of town. She thinks they're coming for him. 
So she goes to the waitress. She's all like, look, I need to tell you something. You ain't gonna believe me. Just listen up. So she tells about the whole children of the corn thing. And, you know, it's freaking out the waitress and stuff. She's like, look, I just need you to get my son and drive as far as you can and don't come back. I have to take care of something here in town, but I'll find you. The waitress does not want to do that. She just like, look, man, I can't do that. No, no, no. But she's like, look, please just do that for me. So it's like, all right, fine, I'll do it. But I don't have a car. <laughs> so Ruth goes, well, she also tells Ruth that her real name is Sandy. Sandy is from the first movie, but I don't know who it is because I can't find a picture of her exactly. So anyway, Ruth heads back to the mechanic shop and there's a woman that's all like, look, I need a roof canal done. I need my car back and blah, 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 and stuff like that. And so when they go inside, they see the blood. And then they find Carl's dead body. The, the woman who needs the roof canal runs out screaming. Um, Ruth is just like, she's just looking at the body kind of like, it doesn't even numb her really. Like she's not scared, nothing, but she's kind of a little shaken and she touches his body to see if he's actually dead. Well, of course he's dead. But then she gives that roof canal woman car to the waitress, Sarah, and her and her son drive off. Now here's the weird thing that happens. Sarah takes the boys somewhere in town on a giant, they call water towers, like, you know, like, um, no big metal dome thing that have water in it. They're on top of that, just out of the blue. I'm just like, why the world are they sitting on that for? That's just weird. And she's telling him a weird story. She's acting weird. And he's all like, you're not taking me out of here, are you? And she's like, nope. <laughs> I'm like, oh, okay, something crappy, something weird is going to happen, right? She goes and she sees, oh, by the way, when that little girl killed Carl, she did like a cartwheel and everything. Like she cartwheeled on out of there. I'm like, what the world? <laughs> Who is she, Harley Quinn? So you know, <laughs> um, Sandy Roof, or whatever she wants to call herself now, she sees the little girl keeps going to this one house. There's a woman that also goes in the house. She goes in there, the woman is dead. She sees the little girl covered in blood, right? And the little girl looks a little frightened. Well, in comes that of Sarah and her son. And then when we see Ruth, Ruth is covered in blood. Apparently, the little girl is technically really Ruth. It was Ruth doing all these killings, like blacking out and murdering all these people in town and stuff. I did not see that coming. That was very interesting. Um, it kind of reminds me of identity, but people hated that ending in identity, but people seem to love that ending here. So I don't know how you can like it in one, but not the other one. And so I just found that very fascinating and stuff, but it was kind of weird. Cause you know, when Carl was getting killed, he never was all like roof stop. Like it would have you know, clicked in people's head. I think if they would have revealed that then and there, I would have had more of an impact to it. You know what I'm saying? Um, and it was just kind of weird. Every time she kept seeing this little girl, it just never weirded her out. And now we know why and stuff. So Sarah's all like something, something, something has to go back and blah, 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 back to the cornfield and blah, blah. So, you know, you can't escape your past and blah, blah, blah. And, so Ruth hugs her son and she's all just kind of like, you know, oh, I'm so sorry, blah, 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 blah. And then all of it, talking about how much I love you. Then all of a sudden her son kills Ruth, like just stabs her in like the neck and everything. And I'm just like, why? Like, why did he kill her and stuff? And so then Ruth walks out to like the, the grass. The grass is very thick. It goes up to like your stomach or chest and you have to walk through all this grass. It's weird. And then she just flops down and she dies and everything covered in blood. Then the waitress, you know, the, the, the waitress is one of those people, children of the corn who escaped and everything. And so she was sent to find like Ruth, but this don't make no sense. The waitress is upset because, you know, she, uh, Ruth killed all those kids when she set the uh, cornfield ablaze. But here's the thing. This was so random for Ruth and her son to end up in a town that also had the waitress who was also one of those children of the corn. Like, that don't make no sense. It was too much of a coincidence. So then 
um at the end we see somebody's giving a sermon it's ruth's son aaron he's giving a sermon similar to that of isaac is that what was that the dude's name from the first movie i can't remember and he's dressed in preacher clothes and he's preaching and all this other stuff when we see the waitress in the back and i'm just like that was a weird way to in the movie like why would he be a preacher what is he preaching about he never read the bible did that strange like you know blue devil thing take over him maybe i don't know but he didn't transform so i'm very weirded out by the ending i'm weirded out by her son killing him and, i mean killing her and the son becoming like a preacher and stuff i just don't get the ending like at all it just it just doesn't set right with me that's what it is. what's weird is that a lot of people love this movie they say it's better than genesis i don't know what genesis is about i'm not watching that since apparently it's bad <laughs> and stuff but it's just like this movie is very uneven and stuff it's so it's just it's kind of hard to take in sometimes personally for me i think this movie would have been a whole lot better if like like set up everything the way you did with Ruth and her son on the run, but we actually see like you know people who survived the fire actually looking for her and, and interacting with the people and acting weird and cult like that would have been so much more engaging in my opinion than them kidnapping Ruth and the son, but then brainwashing the son and everything to then where he killed them like oh you are chosen to lead our people and blah blah, blah. that would have been like so much better. And then you want to go another way, you could just uh, erase the entire children of the corn thing. Maybe Ruth came from like a cult or something like that, or like a bad relationship. She got pregnant by her, um, the father of her baby. She flees him. She's on the run. He's constantly looking for her. She interacts with these people in this old hick town. And, you know, she's not getting along with them as he's coming in. And then Carl could be, like, there to help save the day. Something like that. I would have done it more like that. But this is felt, this movie just felt very, very, very uneven. And a little unclear, you know? That wasn't that spooky. Alright, well, I shall talk to y'all later. Bye. <laughs>